And now it is my great, 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 great pleasure to introduce the speaker for tonight, an amazing human, someone I love deeply, my teacher, and the former president of Spiritual Unity Movement, Dr. Patrick J. Harbula, also elder, and he'll tell you all about that himself. Patrick has been a spiritual leader, counselor, and coach for over 28 years and reaches hundreds of thousands with his writing and personal and media appearances. He is the author of The Magic of the Soul, Applying Spiritual Power to Daily Living, which is an accredited course for science of mind training through Centers for Spiritual Living, and it's an amazing book. He is founder of the Living Purpose Institute and creator of the Life Coaching Certification Program and the Primal Fire Intensive. He was ordained as an independent religious science minister by the late Dr. Earl Barnum in 1985 and affiliated with CSL in 2010. He trained in spiritual psychology under the late Dr. Vivian King. He is also ordained and recognized as a doctor of divinity through Spiritual Unity Movement, of which he was the president for 12 years. Yes. <laughs> we would not be here without Patrick. He founded Meditation Magazine. He was formerly a director for Sage Publications, a world-renowned social science publisher. He was initiated as an honorary elder in the Dakota <coughs> tribe by Elder Joseph Graywolf from Arizona. Patrick will be available after the service to sign his book, which is out on the table, and speaking on the title tonight of Non-Attachment, The Real Secret to Manifestation and Freedom. Please welcome Patrick Harbula. <laughs> uh, I feel this is so nostalgic, really. Um, as I drove up today, I just uh, and saw the building, the onion. It's like I'm coming home. Yeah. Such a beautiful place. So many great memories here. And and my mom, who was a mem member here, I, I saw her face on the side of the building. She her she's present today. She <coughs> passed a couple years ago. And wow, can you feel the magic in this room right now? I just want to. Stop talking for a moment and just let us feel it. Feel the presence. Feel the power. Take a deep breath into it. I feel an anticipation of something exciting, something magical, something stupendous going to happen in this building, is happening in this building right now, started happening in this building, before any of us even showed up, was accentuated and exclamation pointed when Ed Wing and his friends began to play and prepare the energy here so masterfully for this evening. Ah, non-attachment. Interesting, I'm talking about non-attachment. We're here to set intentions for what we want to create, and yet I'm talking about non-attachment. There's a reason for that. I'm going to begin and end with a quote from the Buddha. Uh, the Buddha said, non-attachment, non-attachment, see I'm not attached to this microphone working at all, because I can yell if I have to. Non-attachment is the philosophy of, our, of my life, is what the Buddha said. So that, it must have been a pretty important concept to him, right? That is the philosophy, that is the main precept in Buddhism is non-attachment. And I think I'll read you a quote here from Lee. Testing, all right. We don't want it to cut out during Aldous. So Aldous said, <clears throat> it's difficult to find a single word that will adequately describe the ideal man or woman, I'll add in gender-free um, vocabulary here, uh, the ideal man of the free philosophers, the mystics, the founders of religions. Non-attached is perhaps the best. The ideal man or woman is the non-attached man or woman, non-attached to his or her bodily sensations and lusts 
not attached to his or her craving for power and possessions, not attached to the objects of these various desires, not attached to his or her anger and hatred, not attached to his or her exclusive loves, not attached to wealth, fame, social position, not attached even to science, art, speculation, philanthropy. Yes, not attached even to these. I'm going to tell you about a, uh, uh, an experience I had after reading a book called, by Pam Grout called E Squared. Anyone read that book? Really powerful book, huh? It's, it's the subtitle is something like Nine Experiments to Absolutely Prove that Your Consciousness is What Creates Your Reality. And so one of the exercises, the first exercise in the book, and what's kind of interesting about her presentation and how it differs from a lot of Law of Attraction presentation is that she says, not only intend what you want from the universe, but demand it with as much power as you possibly can. And also, she says, what's different, because we often hear in New Thought, to, you know, once we declare our intention to kind of let it go, and then it's, the timing is up to God. That's God's time, right? She says, no, give, it, give the universe a deadline. The universe actually wants a deadline because then it knows when you want it fulfilled. And so many, many of the experiments in the books are 48 hours, okay? So the experiment is, and you can do this without reading the book. The experiment is, you could do this tonight is decide or intend that you're going to receive a gift within the next 48 hours and you actually write down uh, this intention and you don't specify what the gift is, okay? Just write down that you're going to receive a gift within and write down the date that it will come, 48 hours from now, the exact time, and, <clears throat> you, and the, the intention will be that the gift will be so large and so obvious that there will be no question that it is a manifestation of that intention. So I went ahead and I, and I did the experiment, and I was teaching a class, I uh, don't remember which class now, and it was being done on a donation basis. And I had asked people to pledge the amount that they wanted to, to tithe each week to the class ahead of time. And so the first couple weeks, it was almost exactly 200 were the donations for the class. So the third week, which was not 48 hours, and I think it's because I didn't really completely believe in the whole 40-hour timing thing, so it happened in 72 hours, of course, for me. Um, instead of 200 this time, there was $1,500 in the basket. A little bit of an increase there, right? So there's no question in my mind that that was a manifestation from this intention. But here's the thing, the reason I share this story is here's the thing that I knew. As I thought back to like 15, 20 years ago, if I had done this exercise, maybe even 10 years ago, um, I would have had some attachment to the outcome. I would have been thinking, if it doesn't show up, then maybe I did something wrong. Or maybe this works for some people, but it doesn't work for me. Um, but because of living from practice, living from a place of non-attachment. I'll talk more about that in a moment. I didn't care at all. I had no attachment whatsoever to whether anything showed up. It's all a game anyway for me nowadays. And, and so I know that I wouldn't have had the same results 15 years ago because there would have been that attachment. Because you see what happens when we are attached to any kind of outcome. And this is the reason I'm talking about this tonight, because we're setting intentions. As I say in my book, The Magic of the Soul, that I wrote 14 years ago, the most powerful consciousness for creating what we want is, to, is twofold. One is to, as Pam Grout says, demand what we want from the universe, be completely and totally clear what it is, and two, be completely and totally non-attached to how, when, or even if it occurs. Now, most of the law of attraction information, and um, Jackie Lapin gave a great talk on this last week, is about uh, setting the intention, right? For me, that's the easy part. You know, we can, we can do a, have a practice of focusing our intention on what we want, and we can get better and better at that. Um, but it's kind of a lifelong practice 
to, to be in a state of non-attachment, to, to, to not be attached to the results, to not be attached to anything, okay? Because what happens when I am attached to an outcome? So I'm intending that for this thing to happen, and I have some attachment that it, that it will, or I have a, an attachment to a possession or something that I don't want to lose. What happens is I'm, there's going to be some fear that it won't happen or that I will lose what I have, right? And so whatever degree of fear is there, there's energy that's going into creating what I don't want from that fear, however subtle it may be, okay? And when I, when it's the opposite, when I'm completely non-attached, then I have complete power. It's like this. If you could imagine the image of a person with many attachments and a line of energy going out to each one of those attachments, then their energy is all dispersed all over the place. You see that? But a person who has no attachments, or rel no attachments is kind of impossible for a human being, but has relatively little attachment. The power is intact. So two things happen when we have an attachment. One is I'm putting energy into what I want, don't want. And two is I'm diffusing my energy and so I don't have as much power to create what I want. So when I am non-attached, then I have all my power present within me. My aura is tight and powerful. And then when I, when I put my attention to something, it manifests easily and effortlessly because I have all my power going into it. Does that make sense? I just want to allow some space. I feel like there's so much magic in the room. I want to talk less and leave some spaces here to just breathe in and feel the truth in that. Take it beyond the intellectual level. Take it into your heart. Take it into your physical being into your energy body, the power of that. In fact, imagine right now, think of some of the things that you are attached to in your life, and what would it be like if you just dropped the attachment? You can still, you can have this dichotomy of being focused on this is what I want, but no attachment as to whether it happens or not. See if you feel more powerful in just letting go of the attachments. What I find is, and, and how I came upon this is, you know, my book, The Magic of the Soul, some of you have heard the story of how I was writing this book, which was all about manifestation, how to create what you want from the magic of your soul. And I became chronically ill and to make a long story short, what, I, what it ended up becoming, because as long as I was try, fighting the, the, uh, the symptoms and trying to manifest a different reality, resisting what was or what is, then I was, um, I was in a state of tension, right? in a state of tension. As soon as I relaxed into it, and, I, and the illness was so chronic that I was fairly convinced that I would not be on the planet much longer in this form. <clears throat> and I got to a place where I just gave up because I was trying, I tried everything to heal and nothing was working while I was resisting the symptoms all along. And finally when I just gave up, not in an apathetic way, but in a surrendering way, and I said, you know what, if I am to die from this, if my physical being is to cease to exist as a result of this condition, I'm going to use this experience to understand who I am as a sacred being at the deepest level possible. And guess what happened? Bega began to heal. And it wasn't a, a straight road to recovery. What would happen is I would start to feel better as a result of surrendering. And then I'd start to do some of the things I used to do, like walk, and that would put me back in bed. And then I would resist the symptoms because it felt so good just to feel a little bit better just for a little while. And I wanted to get that back and so I'd be resisting again. Then I'd remember, oh yeah, it was that surrendering thing that caused the beginning of the healing. 
and I'd surrender again. And, and so this happened in a cyclic way. It was though, as though my soul were teaching me in the most powerful and direct way to be in a consistent state of surrender. What is life like in a consistent state of surrender? Take a deep breath into that. Create some spaciousness around that. <clears throat> so, as a result of practicing, what came out of that is the intention or the practice to look for the magic in every experience. There was a magic in my illness that was teaching me that lesson. There is a magic in every, every experience that we have. We can always, and you know, we all know this. We all hear the phrase that everything is for us. Like all these microphones. <laughs> such an abundance of microphones. They just keep coming. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> uh, this staff, by the way, I've got to mention them. This, this staff of people, these are my best friends in the world. They really are. The SUM staff people. <clears throat> they have sucky microphones, but, <laughs> but they're beautiful people. So, um, <clears throat> so, how that evolved for me then in practicing looking for the magic in every experience. Because we all kind of know this, but we, you know, and we might even say in retrospect, we look back over our life and see that the most moments were the times when we grew the most, right? We might even say it was a blessing. And yet in the moment did we see the blessing. Usually when, when crisis hits us, we begin in a place of resistance, right? So the question is, what would it be like is if, rather than waiting until we, to going through a process to get, to get to a place of surrender, why not surrender, as I say in The Magic of the Soul, how often do I wait until the crescendo of struggle to surrender? Why not struggle at the first, or, or surrender at the first sign, at the very first sign of any stress or discomfort? And even if I don't, so the question is, what's the magic in the situation? What's the opportunity for the growth? What is the sacred here for me to harvest in this moment? <laughs> no, nah, it doesn't. I have no attachment to it. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> it's wireless. You know, the thing is, um, so what is? What's the magic in the microphone cutting out? The magic for me is that the words, and that's what I was already feeling, that the words aren't that important. Feel the energy in the message. That's what's important here, right? That's the magic that's, that Spirit's teaching us right now with the, with the microphone cutting out. The humor, that too. <clears throat> it's all about humor. It's all a game, I tell you. Hey, look, another microphone, man. <laughs> New batteries, let's see if that works. Look at that, manifestation after manifestation. <laughs> Such an abundant universe. And so, <clears throat> how it's evolved for me then is even beyond looking for the magic of it, what I, I naturally do most of the time, believe me, there are times when things come up and I resist, especially little things, you know, little silly things. Um, and yet it's my consistent practice. And the more we practice to something, the more it becomes integrated. And so now, most often when challenging things come up, I see the beauty in them immediately. I expect there's going to be a beauty. Or even if I can't see what it is, I don't know what the particular magic or beauty is. I trust that it's there. Right? And so, <clears throat> one of my uh, clients years ago, um, she wanted to purchase a house, a million dollar house. And it was a little bit above her, you know, what she felt she could afford. But nevertheless, she really wanted this, 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 this house. And she understood this concept of non-attachment we talked about in our coaching sessions. And so she came to me and she said, so I, you know, I really want this house. And so I was practicing not being attached to it so I could get it. <laughs> and so she noticed that she was being attached in her non-attachment <laughs> or using non-attachment to be attached or something like that. 
So, and I notice myself doing that sometimes too. Oh, I, I want this to happen, so I better be non-attached, right? Um, so, and it's important to also, you know, to, you can always stay, take it one more step back. And so, when we are practicing non-attachment, if you find that you're becoming attached, don't be attached to being non-attached, right? Ah, take a deep breath just into the peace of what it would be like to be non-attached to experience and outcomes. I'm telling you, it is the only way to ultimate peace. You know, we think that happiness comes from some situation changing, but that is always temporary. If it's some situation in the world of form, it's fleeting because everything in the world of form is constantly changing and cycling in and out. A uh, great book I'm reading right now called Broken Open. Anyone read this book? The whole section on birth and death and how the only way to true joy, she says, um, her, the author's name is escaping me right now, but the only way to true joy is when we embrace our mortality. That's the ultimate non-attachment, right? To not be attached to being on this planet. That is a lifelong journey as well. And yet, what would it be like to no longer be attached to even being on this planet? Can you just have a sense of that? Of how much power we have in giving up our attachment to having a physical existence? You feel that? Take a deep breath into that. Hmm. So the only way to true peace and joy and living from a place of unconditional love is to recognize that all of that comes from only one place and that's inside. You know, we as human beings, we tend to over and over look to, how can I change this? How can I change that? And again, what happens for me now, since I don't really care if anything manifests or not, and the less I care, by the way, the more good that comes into my life. You know, as I was sitting there thinking, it occurred to me, so as we were getting ready, uh, as we were going through the announcements and everything, it just occurred to me that... Um, when we are super intent on something happening, we're actually limiting the universe's power. We are actually not leaving room for the mystery, right? What I find as I move further and further down this path of non-attachment is that I have more and more space in my life. And, that's, and when that idea came to me, that's when I thought, oh, I want to pause in this talk and leave space. Because when we leave space without intentionality, then the universe abhors a void and says, wow, i got to fill this up with something really cool. Right? Can you feel that? So it's great. We're going to have an intention setting ceremony tonight. So it's great to, to intend those, uh, the things that we want. We're going to release things from the past and we're going to intend what we want for our future. But we can do it with a sense of playfulness a sense of lightness. The phrase that comes to me now is rather than I'm going to make this happen, at being at one extreme, wouldn't it be fun if? You feel the lightness in that? And so I just did a trip to Canada in, in September, and I did several workshops and events up there. And each one I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I had 25 people for this event? Wouldn't it be fun if I had 35 for that one? Wouldn't it be fun if I had 45? And every single one, every single event of about, I don't know, six or seven events that I did was exactly the number that I said, wouldn't it be fun if? Again, because there's no attachment, the universe just floods in. It's so easy. Manifestation is so easy when we have no attachment. So, <clears throat> let's see. I don't want to talk too much more. I want to get into the ceremony. So, I'll tell you about um, my teacher and non-attachment. My teacher was uh, Vivian King. Some of you might have heard me tell this story before. 
and I, and I write about it in the book, The Magic of the Soul. She, um, she was my teacher in psychosynthesis as I was introduced, and, um, or spiritual psychology, and she was hit by a drunk driver, and um, she became a paraplegic, or a quadriplegic as, as a result of it. She was in a coma for um, three months, three months and her head swelled up the size of a basketball. She lost the use of her arms and legs and her vocal cords. And when I first saw her in Long Beach, which where she was moved from Texas where the accident was to Long Beach, um, she was living in New Mexico at the time, um, I got to visit her and uh, I walked into the hospital room and there was this you know, physically shell of a woman that I knew as this dynamic, amazing saint of a woman, very powerful woman, and her face was her head was normal size now, but her face was very contorted, but her smile was the same. She could still smile. <clears throat> and, and they were just deciding where they were going to bring her next for her rehabilitation, what, what facility. And it was either going to be Orange County or the San Fernando Valley where I live. So I said, well, if it's the San Fernando Valley, then I could come and I can kind of help out and be there and help with her physical therapy and so on. And uh, she had friends in Orange County, too. So it ended up, they didn't know where I lived. They just knew I was in the San Fernando Valley. She ended up moving, they moved her to a facility that was a block and a half away from where I lived. <clears throat> so it was clear what the intention of the universe was for that. So I got to go there and spend time with her and help her in her rehabilitation. And, um, and I would go a couple times a week. And it might st sound like I was doing a lot for her, but really I was the one who was getting the gift. The saint of a woman, she was such an inspiration to everyone in her presence because um, she, I asked her one time, I said, are you angry at the person who did this to you? And she looked at me confused and said, I don't have time to be angry. I'm focused on my healing. She said, I, I do wish she had some insurance that would have covered my medical bills. Um, and she could speak in whispers with an amplification and that's how, how you could hear her. One time, um, when she'd be eating, she had a mechanical arm that would bring her food up because she didn't want to be fed, she wanted to do it herself. And she'd be getting food all over her face and all over her bib and all over the table and the floor. And as I say this, you know, you might think, oh, that must have been uncomfortable. I mean, if I put myself in her position, I might have felt embarrassed. But not her. She would be smiling or laughing the entire time because she saw the cosmic joke of it. She knew that she was not her body. She was not attached to her physical being. She said to me, you know, Patrick, near the end of her life, she said, and she, was, she died at about 55. This all happened to her when she was about 53. She said, as long, you know, I'm a teacher who can no longer speak. I'm a writer who can no longer write. But as long as I have a physical body, I can remain a presence of peace and joy and love in this world. Feel the power in that? And she decided, <clears throat> she decided to leave her body. She decided to no longer be on this plan, plane. And I was with her a few days before she started her fast. And she said, um, and, and, and it, was, it wasn't what she said. It was being in her presence. It was what I was talking about before. She was a person who no longer had any attachment to being on this planet. In fact, what she said was, I am a dancer who can no longer, longer dance. And this physical body is keeping from me, me from dancing. And so I'm going to go and dance. And she dan I see her dancing around all the time. But being in the presence of someone who had no attachment to physical life, was so profound, so powerful. You could feel her essence just filling the room. That's the power of non-attachment. <clears throat> so um, two more quick things. So anyone see the, uh, the movie, my favorite exotic Marigold Hotel? Is that a cool movie? My favorite exotic Marigold Hotel. Check it, rent that movie or check it out on Netflix or something. A really fun movie. It's about, <clears throat> so this, this, Indi this guy in India, he has this dilapidated hotel and he markets it to these people in, in England as a retirement home. And so, um, but they, they photoshopped the brochure and made it look like this beautiful, you know, polished luxury place and people get there and it's completely dilapidated. 
and <clears throat> everything's broken down and people are coming to him and they're complaining over and over and he says, and his standard line is, we have a saying in India and it goes, um, let's see if I can remember now, <clears throat> it goes, everything will be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, it's not yet the end. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be attached uh, on the journey to getting to the end. So the final quote from the Buddha is, and I love this, and do this with me. He said, when we finally realize that everything, that everything, every experience is perfect just the way it is, we will tilt our head back Feel the power in that. Okay. So we're going to start the ceremony in a couple moments. Um, let's see. While I'm explaining the ceremony, I'm not going to take much time to do this. Sometimes I'll give, I give a lot of background examples about how powerful it is, but I don't want to take time to do that tonight. So uh, just trust me that it's powerful. Um, I have many, many examples of people who have done this ceremony and things changed like the next day so radically. Um, that they were actually, it happened faster than they wanted it to. So be careful what you ask for. <clears throat> um, so if you want to, while I'm even talking about it, just uh, go up and get a drum if you don't have one yet. Um, be good if everyone has a drum or a rattle or something. So what we're going to do is we'll go around the room in a circle, and each person is going to get to stand up and, and say your name and declare two things what you're releasing from the past, from 2014 or even further back, and, what, and the second thing is what your intention is for the new year. So you're going to do this. Now, you're not going to release, you're not going to speak maybe everything that you're releasing. You're not going to speak maybe everything that you're intending because you've got to do this in 30 seconds or less. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. <clears throat> 15 seconds would be even better. And then, once you have finished, we'll be passing the microphone around. Once you have completed what you have to say, then everyone's going to drum for a few seconds. And when I do this with my drum, <clears throat> just like this, that means to, to stop the drumming and then we move right to the next person. Okay? And so if by chance someone, I don't think anyone will do this, but if by chance anyone goes over 30 seconds, the drumming will just start. That will be the cue. <laughs> so I thought, that's, that's a pretty good system, huh? That's a new idea for the ceremony. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. Any, any questions? Okay, so we're going to go, we'll go around the room. We're going to start... Where? <laughs> With Aganes? <laughs> we can start over there. Then we'll, <clears throat> we'll start and we'll go along around the back row all the way around. It's going to go in a spiral inward. We'll go all the way around the back row. Um, actually, why don't we start, because we've got like a fourth row back there, so we'll start in the fourth row, and then it'll come into the back of the third row, and then it'll then it'll come to the second row over here, and then it'll come to the third row uh, like that. And then when we're done, we'll go into a short meditation. And uh, as, we're, um, as we're doing the drumming, you know, if you feel inspired to bring any music into that Edwing, and then certainly when we go into the meditation, if you can do some, some keyboards or something, um, something melodic, something mystical, that would be awesome. <laughs> Okay, so let's, oh, I'm going to do a chant first. I always start with uh, this chant, which is a uh, Lakota chant, and it's uh, an invoking of spiritual powers, including uh, Chanupa, the sacred pipe, Wakli Krishna, the sacred eagle, Ikshiwashasha, sacred medicine, and Pechuta, medicine people. Uh, it's not one that you can probably follow uh, along with too well, but you can, uh, you can drum with me a, a little bit softly so you can still hear me. And, um, and you can hum it if you want. And Lynn knows the chant, I'm sure. You can join in with me. 
And, um, and then at the end, I'll ask if there's for people to call out a few words that you would like to be present or qualities you want to be present in this ceremony. And, um, and we'll do it like that. Just to say that um, before we begin this, that this was uh, shared with me, this ceremony, about 25 years ago by a very powerful shaman named Ed Perazzo. You get to go first, my dear. Oh, hello. What you're and what you are intending. I speak these words for my son. It is his request 
for assistance in releasing the struggle and embracing being open to receive financial security. For myself, I release fear and I embrace joy. I am releasing any old habits or thoughts within me that hold me back from living what I intend to be from my loving kindness. I give up attachment to outcomes and to all of the wants, needs, and desires that I have. And I step in to all of the opportunities that open for me to be in loving, kind relationships and to be of global service. My name is Frank and I release all pain and disease that may come my way and I'm experiencing my true self this year. Um, I'm releasing entrapment and in this moment I'm bringing in an understanding a deeper understanding of the why and the the reason for the intentions that I have intention in what I'm saying the intention in what I'm doing I want to get to know what it is underneath and be more familiar because I think it will help me in my practice of being here, being in the moment. Thank you. I am releasing false evidence appearing real in all departments of my life, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And I'm embracing with my divine intention, compliance. That's my word for the year, compliance. And that's compliance to spiritual direction, spiritual guidance, to really open myself to listen and hear and to move forward in that direction. And moderation in everything. I'm releasing Shannon and Kim who have passed to God. And my intention is not to read everything that comes before me. I learned how to release many years ago and I've released all the time so I don't have anything to release. It's constant. And my intention is to be continuing in the awareness and the openness of the higher master teacher where I take my direction. Well, I'm releasing allergies that prevent me from enjoying Mother Earth. And I am bringing in clarity, clarity of speech, clarity of mind, Clarity of expression. I am releasing all subject 
our subjectivity to negative input, including that from myself, <clears throat> uh, as well as other people. My intention is to create a happy, joyous, healthy, pain-free home and environment for myself and my love. I'm releasing fear and embracing abundance. I'm Agnes, and I am releasing giving power to false gods of what I think is financial security or any security that is causing me to have accidents to remind me that that's not the way it is and that I will step into what I am divinely guided to without any, anything holding me back and following through and knowing that the financial will, whatever, will sustain me no matter what. Hi, I'm Ed, and I'm releasing laziness, I suppose. <laughs> and I'm embracing a good attitude and hoping to carry that on. Thank you. I'm, re I'm Bobby, and I'm releasing that which I have no control over and I try to control. And my intention is to continue the healing of the cancer that decided it needed a home. And through all the meditation and everything else that I know what to do, it has been diminished. Uh -oh. I'm Burl, and I am releasing attachment. And my intention is to be present in all that I do in the, the year 2015. Hi, I'm Stefan. I'm usually behind the camera, which I'm released tonight. Uh, and it's so beautiful to be detached from my camera and also trying to run a business all by myself and now being open to bringing people in and, and making oneness something so much bigger and that I know it is. And also a attaching myself to expectations of what I should be as a father or a husband or other things in my life and, and just being who I am now and, and accepting where I am and all that I have. Um, thank you. Uh, my name's Joseph. I'm releasing attachment and doubt, uh, attachment to outcomes, and I'm welcoming in uh, complete abundance in, in the now moment and, uh, and a complete sense of uh, positive welfare. My name is Emily, and I am releasing all forms of sabotage in the new year, whether conscious or subconscious or towards others or towards myself or from others. Every form of sabotage be gone. And um, in the new year, I'm embracing better ways to trust my intuition so I can sense that stuff and take positive action when it's coming at me. And also uh, to further deepen my ability to enhance the greater good. Hi, I'm David, and I'm releasing everything from my past that I have been allowing to change my todays, and my intention is in the future to be happy with every moment the way it comes to me. I'm Jennifer. Uh, I am releasing fear and anger and uh, embracing wellness as well as any messages or guidance I receive that will help me learn what my purpose here is. Uh -oh. 
I'm Nancy, I release despair and dread, and I embrace prosperity and a deep sense of overall security and safety. Uh -oh. uh, my name's Alan, and I'm basically discarding a lot of broken attachments that I've dragged behind me for a long time. And I now wish to go forward to the new year. Uh, fully open, fully free to fully be myself in every way. Oh. I'm David and I'm releasing all self-will, control, worry, and fear, and welcome prosperity and abundance and faith in all areas of my life. My name is Billy. I'm releasing doubt. And I'm going to embrace and be a more humble, patient person with faith. Uh, thank you. My name is Wing, Ed Wing. I'm releasing all the old paradigm and I welcome in telepathy, teleportation, total oneness and acceptance of all people, all races, all religions here and now. We're all one, we're all provided for and I have no enemies. Everybody is myself. The outside world mirrors who I am and I ask for forgiveness for uh, whatever dumb stuff I've done is because I was hurt and I didn't know how to approach you. I have no enemies. Every man is my brother. Every woman is my daughter, sister, mother. And so it is. Notice how the energy gets more and more powerful the further we spiral around. My name is Marshall, and I suppose I would release past relationships and embrace, I'm looking for Kathy right now, and I embrace the love that I feel, the good feelings, the caring, the security, the safety, and her name is Kathy. Oh yeah, she might. <laughs> Got anything? <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Give some drumming, drumming. drumming. Yeah, drumming, but the four thing. All right. She's releasing her itchiness. <laughs> I'm releasing paralyzing fears that keep me from moving forward. And my intention is to go into this new year with renewed hope and fearlessness. I didn't realize I was saying the same thing, actually. I'm releasing fear, doubt, and hesitation in moving forward and how I'm going to contribute to the world and make a better life and I'm fi embracing finding my path. Oh. I'm releasing all negative previous attachments and embracing God as one for all the interfaith. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Sam. I'm releasing fear and uncertainties of life and embracing the bright future. Uh -oh. Hi, my name is Vatsla and I'm releasing all fear and doubt about my capabilities and embracing all the opportunities and the guidance the universe continues to give it to me. Uh -oh. 
My name is Carol, and I am releasing the inertia of remorse and regret. And it is my intention to live up to the name my parents gave me, to be a song of joy. And that she who is filled with grace, mercy, and prayer in this life. Uh -oh. I'm Christy Marie. I'm releasing excess baggage in all forms, and I'm embracing to love and be loved. I'm releasing fear, sadness, depression, and I allow myself to open to love and to, uh, to all the good and magnificent. Oh. I'm releasing old resentments and victimhood, and my intention is to trust the universe has my back. I'm Laila, and I'm releasing financial dependency, and I'm welcoming freedom, my freedom. I am Ruth, and I'm releasing any old attachments, and for the coming year, I'm going to create perfect health on every level of my being. Hi, I'm Marlena, and I am releasing everything you guys are releasing. That's great. I love it. And shoulda, woulda, couldas. I'm releasing those too. And trusting and knowing that I am right where I'm supposed to be and that I can step into my power right here, right now, and be at peace and love myself totally. Uh -oh. I'm releasing all the fears, um, sadness, laziness, and I, my intention is to welcome smiles, happiness, friends, prosperity, and all the good stuff. Uh -oh. I am releasing all the conditionings and the, the programs that I have from my past, and I am welcoming that the divine will grant me total awakening and God realization. Oh -ho. My name is Marlene and I'm releasing all judgments on myself and others and forgiving myself and recognizing that everyone did the best they could. Also forgiving myself for things that appeared to be mistakes that they really were not mistakes, they were lessons. Uh, welcoming in rich relationships that are very secure and bring me abundance, prosperity, and happiness, and sharing the blessings with those around me. I am Marilyn. I let go of the past, and I welcome divine love. I'm Crystal, and I'm going to release my fear. My name's Michelle, and I want to release a fear of abundance. I finally figured out that's probably the root of my problem. I'm afraid oh. to have things. So I will now embrace any and all abundance that come my way, and especially something within the next 47 hours. I'm Barbara, and I think I'd like to release some of the massive, um, overwhelming responsibilities that I have. Um, I'd like to keep some of them, of course, but by giving up so many of them, I'll get rid of my anxiety, and I will keep my joy, my peace, my pleasure. <laughs> My name is Grace, 
and um, I'm releasing all that no longer serves me, and I am bringing in more intention to walk bravely and strongly on the path that I've chosen. I'm Liz. Um, I just want to say this works, because what I did last year has manifested. Um, so I would release uh, control and expectations around my children and uh, bring in more love and grace. Hi, I'm Janae. Um, I'm releasing, I lost my doggy this year. I'm seeing that baby. Sorry. So I let go of him. Only in the form. I let go of my eating disorder and depression and my dad's cancer. And I accept my worth and I, my authentic self. And I learn to love myself fully. Hi, I'm Liana, and I'm releasing excessive um, focus and dependence on my cell phone and on um, being excessively thrifty. And I'm embracing generosity. I'm give, gifting $10 a day wherever I can and being paying it forward, buying people things, whatever I can to be more generous. And I'm also embracing my authentic voice as a writer and a filmmaker. Well, I'm, uh, hmm. I'm uh, releasing inner tears. Um, they're not quite coming completely out. They have, though. And I'm releasing all the fear of, um, fear is di disconnection. Um, mm, fears of being good enough, of having the right answers, of having any answers. Um, I'm embracing connection. I'm em embracing connections. I'm embracing sovereignty over my life of where I, where I live and with who I live. Oh. Embracing sovereignty with my sexuality, with who I am, with my finances. Allowing finances. <laughs> finances, actually, some digits would be nice. And I'm allowing these finances to be in 50 hours. <laughs> uh, my name is Jeremy. I guess I'm releasing negative associations, thought associations, and focusing on abundance in all its forms. Of death. I'm Nicolette, and I'm releasing fear, sadness, self-limiting behaviors, unnecessary anxiety, and procrastination. I'm embracing self-trust, self-love, joy, and great health. I love and accept all parts of myself. I am also embracing full trust in others. Uh, 
Uh, this is really hard for me. Um, since most of my faulty uh, choices are driven by a sexually charged, premature, hedonistic child mind that seeks attention and validation from everywhere and anyone, I'm releasing the need to announce issues I need to release in public <laughs> at, and just silently releasing them in a thoughtful and healthy way by myself. Thank you. Hello, my name is Pamela, and I am releasing struggle within my own self, with myself, and I am embracing unconditional alignment with my divinity. Hi, my name is Joyce. I'm releasing um, doubt within myself and anger and I'm embracing more strength and believing in myself and to the unknown. I am Sarah Jean and I'm releasing all attachments and fear in all time, space and dimensions and all attachments related to any past program in all, throughout all generations, past lives, in all family lineages, I release all energies that are not serving me any longer in all time, space, and dimensions. I am um, I am embracing now that I love myself unconditionally, I love all beings unconditionally, and um, I am of service from the highest, purest place of unconditional love from my heart, and I, um, that I am completely free on all levels of my life, and I allow full flow and boundless flow in all aspects of my life and on all levels of my life. Thank you. Amen. Uh -oh. I'm Sherry. I'm releasing fear that I'm not good enough, fear that oh. I don't know what to do, I don't know what decisions to make. And I'm embracing trusting myself, um, making authentic connections with other people, and living at the beach. <laughs> My name's Linnell, and I'm releasing um, the fear of being who I am and being the best of who I am, and embracing um, and accepting to have the courage to be the best that I'm going to be. Hi, I am Leslie, and I am releasing my attachment to all of the clutter and things that I have collected over a lifetime to leave space in my surroundings for spirit to flow through <laughs> and accepting the creativity and, um, and the edge to do bold things with my environment, with my home, um, and, uh, and live at peace and comfort. <laughs> I'm Kabbalah, and I'm releasing my need to play small and uh, control events, uh, control results. And I'm embracing the joy of the moment that so pleases me to be present and to also embrace my bowls. I am Lynn. 
and I am releasing my worries, fears, and doubts about what's coming up in the future that keep creeping into my life. And I call into my life the trust, love, and knowing that all is possible and live in the now. Is there anyone who has not spoken that wants to speak? Anyone left? No one besides me, okay. I am releasing my attachment to being non-attached and I am releasing any kind of um, feeling of responsibility at being at some certain level of spiritual awareness and completely releasing that and stepping into even greater experience of love, joy, and freedom each and every day. So it is. Oh. And now let's keep the drumming going for a couple moments, listen to everybody else's beat, and drum for everybody's intentions. Okay, one minute, follow this beat. Everybody, go into your heart too, go into your heart. Feel the rhythm of your own heartbeat. Let's all together. Slowly, gradually get softer. Gradually. 
softer. Let's bring the lights down. Take a deep breath, let out a heartful sigh. Ceremony was the meditation, but we'll go into a couple moments of silence. So feel yourself drawing inward. Take the energy, all the energy of the drumming, all the energy of all the intentions, the power of everyone's intentionality, deep into your heart. We take it in deep into the group heart, our collective heart and our collective mind, into that quiet, that quiet place the center of being, the center of being where infinite possibility, infinite unconditional love, infinite spiritual power and radiance exists. In this moment, we let go of all attachments and dive into the mystery. Giving up attachments in life is very much like giving up attachments to thought in meditation. And our meditation can be a metaphor for our life as we allow the space to go into the stillness. Surrender to the infinite bliss and ecstasy of spirit in this moment knowing that the intentionality is done and now is the time to just release, create the space and just be. Beginning to slowly and gently bring our awareness back into space and time. We know and feel in the core of our being that in setting our intentions and releasing the past and setting our intentions for the future, that we have changed. Each one of us is not the person that walked into this building tonight. We walk out renewed, reborn, revitalized, seeing the world through fresh eyes, coming forth with a new sense of self-appreciation, self-love, self-empowerment. The you that you want to be is manifested right here and right now. 
It has already occurred. All of your intentions have already occurred in mind, in feeling, in heart, in energy. And they're showing up in the world of form as a mere formality. All that's left to do now is to celebrate and be in gratitude. And so we bring our awareness all the way back, open our eyes, looking at the world through fresh eyes and to each and every beautiful face in this building. You are a magnificent and powerful group. And I love you. Awanestika ho komatana omatakuyasa. Let's take a breath. I feel so good. Thank How do you, you feel? <laughs> Let's give a round of applause as well to Reverend Patrick Arbula. <laughs> Bring it. Ed Wayne, Billy, and me. Thank you all for being here tonight. This is light language. As you've heard, Edwin is an amazing musician and he surrounds himself with amazing musicians. It's out on the table. Help yourself. This is the magic of the soul. An amazing book, I've read it. There are great exercises in there that will take you even deeper. Busting loose from the money game. This is also out on the table, brought in by Reverend Patrick. Please help yourself to anything out there that moves your soul. If you feel called to it, get it. Yes, oh yes. You'll find out about there. Don't just walk away. If there are any new people in the room, <laughs> if there are any new people in the room, would you please stand? And thank you for coming. We have a packet of information for you. Take home. We would love to see you again. SUM is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and donations are important to us and for our, our continuing. So if you feel inclined, please feel free to donate anything that you're wanting to. We are an all denominational organization, so we accept denominations of all sizes. And for those of you who feel that spiritual unity movement has become a spiritual nurturing community for you, please feel free to consider tithing, which is tax deductible. And you will find our mailing address in the insert of tonight's program, or you can ask our Treasurer Liz, and she'll fill you in about what's available to you. We are a an organization of volunteers, and we are looking for more. So if you would like to join us, please do. And that would be Kathleen that you would speak to. Um, our group meets, if I think you've met us already, and we're still standing. So please check in with any one of us if you would like to join us, or if you have anything you would like to see here. We also have feedback cards in the program and we read each and every one of those and we adjust our programming according to what you desire. So please fill those out if you would. And next month, we would like you to come back and see us. We're gonna have Corey Leland here. He's been here before, but many years ago, he's a musician and he's crazy good. He works with children and he's bringing a powerful message of peace and prayer and love through his music. Corey's fun, he's gonna be our speaker and musician and the topic is healing spirit. So we'd love to see you back. Um, we are radiating energy every time we do anything. So remember the energy that you've experienced here tonight, that you've received here, that you've created and let's radiate that out in our world on a daily basis. We love you for that and thank you. 
Thank you for coming. We would love to see you again. And in the meantime, I'd like to bring back Florence Riggs, our ritual leader. I'd love to hear a little music underneath, and we'll end with an om. Can Ed Wings play something? Yes, please do. yet. As we remember all of the wonderful release and support of uh, releasing and the intention setting, allow yourself to settle into your chair now as we do this closing ritual. As we come to the close of our full moon ceremony this evening, let us take an, just a moment to savor the centered focus of healing energy and intention support we have generated here tonight. Breathe into that. Remember, as you let your own light shine, you simultaneously give other people permission to do the same. Clearly, knowing yourself as an instrument of light, a being of spirit, you add one more grain of sand to the scales that hold the balance 
for our global future. Know that at a certain point, one grain of sand can tip the scales. You, in this very moment, may be that grain of sand. And now I'd like to invite the candle lighters to come forward to form a circle around the candle table. And then everyone else, come on in and form a circle around the candle lighters. Let us embody the spiritual power that has been generated and received from the forces of light that guide this service. Let us focus that energy into the group center, allowing it to rise up and pour this blessing out into our world, extending its positive healing effect throughout the awareness of humankind and the consciousness of our planet. Will sound an extended freeform ohm. As the sacred tone pours through you, feel yourself participating, drawing this healing love energy deeply into yourself and sending it out into your life, into our world. As we sound the Om, let us consciously extend our blessing to our planetary life, to Mother Earth, extending to the animals, the trees, the air, the water, and all beings everywhere, and also to those who are in need of healing. And for those we would like to include in this healing circle, we speak their names together silently or audibly. and all our relations. Many blessings of this new year. Thank you, and good night. Everyone, we have new calendars. Pick some calendars up on your way out on the table for this year. We got it for this year. And I must admit that Bro and I do have a little bit, at least a little bit of attachment to our drums. So do bring them back to where they were, their spots.